If you like working with headphones on as I do, then you know how easy it is to miss a doorbell. So I made a device that fixes this problem. ESP Bell Max and ESP Bell Lite. These devices offer interactive notifications that keep you informed. The best part? You can take action directly from the notification. Just tap open door or simply tap ignore to dismiss the alert. These simple but versatile IoT intercom and doorbell modules are designed to make your smart home even smarter. Thanks to our generous sponsor PCBWay, three lucky subscribers will get the ESP bell for free. So be sure to subscribe and leave your comments to enter the giveaway. This time, I'm aiming for matte black and green PCBs, a new choice for me. The Gerber files for ordering the PCBs are available on the GitHub page. Also, you can order the 3D printed housing for the project directly from PCBWay. If you're ready to get started with ESP Bell, you have two options. You can assemble it yourself using the interactive HTML boom file. This file guides you on where to solder each component, reducing the chances of errors. Or, if you'd rather not assemble it yourself, you can purchase a pre-assembled board from my shop. All right, let's explore the features, specifications, and how these devices can elevate your smart home experience. When it comes to choosing the ESP Bell version for your setup, it's essential to consider your specific requirements. ESP Bell Max is a battery-powered solution using a Li-Eon 18650 battery, offering the flexibility of not requiring a direct power source. In standby mode, ESP Bell Max doesn't use any power. When triggered, it only draws 21 microamp per second for a few seconds. It's all about efficiency. It features two solid state relays and one optocoupler input for the doorbell. The relays have LED status indicators, and the doorbell input also includes an LED. All LEDs can be disabled by cutting PCB jumpers. E Plus outputs battery voltage exclusively when ESP Bell is enabled, so it can wake up and power external devices like ESP32 cameras. B Plus consistently supplies battery power. ET serves as a secondary external trigger input. DB represents the doorbell input, while R1 and R2 are designated for the relays. However, it's important to note that ESP Bell Max typically relies on being triggered by the doorbell to be controllable. For simplified installation, a 30 cm cable with a connector is provided. Additionally, a 3D case is available for download. On the other hand, ESP Bell Lite is your compact choice. It's perfect for scenarios where installation space is limited. It requires a power supply, making it suitable for constant use without worrying about battery it means you'll need to install the necessary power wiring. What sets ESP Bell Lite apart is its ability to be controlled at any time, independent of the doorbell trigger. When you arrive home, you can use your phone to open the door instead of fumbling with keys. The relay outputs are doubled, with two wires connected to each contact. Additionally, three GPIOs are available, along with one ADC input, a doorbell input, and a power supply input. From a software perspective, ESP Bell Max version employs Arduino code for its functionality and relies on MQTT for communication, while the ESP Bell Lite version utilizes ESP Home. You can configure the ESP Bell Max MQTT sketch in the config.h file. To configure Wi Fi settings, you need to provide the access point's name, channel, and MAC address, ensuring a rapid Wi Fi connection. Local network settings require manually assigning the IP address. This will reduce the time spent on DHCP network configuration. For MQTT settings, you'll fill in the Mosquito Broker credentials and IP address. Timing settings are crucial for optimal performance and energy efficiency. When using ESP Bell Max with an intercom system, select your uptime value carefully to ensure you have sufficient time for picking up your phone, checking notifications, and pressing the action button along with a little extra time in reserve for added convenience. In the doorbell setup, two seconds uptime is more than enough because it is a one-way communication. Now let's talk about uploading the Arduino sketch. To do this, you'll need a regular USB TTL 3.3 volts adapter. If you don't have one, you can check out my open source USB TTL Uniprog project. Additionally, you'll need a pogo pin clamp fixture or you can solder wires directly to ESP Bell Max for programming. Once you've set up the hardware, you can continue and upload the firmware into ESP Bell Max. 
Now let's dive into the specifics of integrating ESP Bell Max with Home Assistant. Here's what you need to do to make it all work. After ESP Bell Power Cycle, Home Assistant will automatically discover ESP Bell Max with three sensors. Battery level, so you'll always know when it's time for a recharge, doorbell status, and RSSI. To enable interactive notifications, you'll need to set up three essential automations. First automation sends an interactive notification with the tag intercom to phones. Second automation clears notifications with the tag intercom on phones when an ignore button on the notification is pressed. The third automation enables the relays R1 and R2 by publishing the MQTT payload and clears notifications with the tag intercom on phones when the notification button is pressed on one of the phones. MQTT command topic is command. Payload is 00. zero. The first digit is controlling R1, second digit controlling R2. For ESP Bell Lite, the third automation is slightly different because I use ESP Home. The beauty of ESP Home is in its simplicity. In the YAML config, you just need to change one line, the delay time. After you click open in the notification, it will keep the relay engaged until the delay has elapsed. When wiring ESP Bell to intercom or doorbell systems, two common configurations are prevalent. The 4 plus N wire and the 1 plus N wire setups. These four wires are typically allocated as follows. One for the microphone, one for the speaker, one for the doorbell, and one for the lock. Additionally, the N wire represents the neutral wire, which is used for the electrical current's return path. In contrast, a 1 plus N system streamlines the wiring process by combining audio communication, control, and power supply over a single wire. Currently, only the 4 plus N intercom system is supported by ESP Bell Max. I found this website which will permit you to easily identify the type of intercom system you own. When it comes to the doorbell setup, it's simpler, requiring just two wires for connection. Just ensure that there's no current leakage between contacts 1 and 2, as shown in the wiring diagram. If there's leakage, ESP Bell may trigger randomly. This current flow could be caused by a light bulb installed in the doorbell button that remains lit. So, it's a good practice to use a multimeter to check the wiring before installation. My intercom operates on a five wire setup. One wire from the optocoupler and another from the relay are both linked to the neutral line. The second wire from the relay is connected to the lock, while the second optocoupler wire is connected to the doorbell. So let's give it a try. All this information and the wiring diagram are available on GitHub. It's time to celebrate our previous video's giveaway winners. If you spot your name among these lucky three, it's your moment. Reach out to claim your well-deserved prize. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to ask. And don't forget to subscribe and comment to participate in our giveaway. Stay tuned for more great projects and see you in the next video.